Hello, it's David Taylor Klaus, and this is Mindset Mondays with DTK. Welcome to episode 35. Um, Mindset Mondays is a cool project where each week I have a chance to play with new ideas, new concept, and new mindsets. And it's designed for folks with a growth mindset or those who would like to create one. The well, I'd love to ask you to click share below you, right? Just below this, and launch this into the world. Share this with your community. Add some voices to the conversation. This is an opportunity to really play and would love you to invite your folk to it as well. And here's what we're playing with today. All that we are it was, is a result of all that we thought. I seem to be on a trend of going for ones that are simple on the surface. <laughs> and I love this one. And there, there are a few reasons. Um, you know, as you saw on the write-up, I spent some time with my coach or one of my coaches out in Santa Barbara. And that whole idea that um, man, our thoughts shape our reality. Um, you know, one of the two theories honored with the Nobel Prize in economics uh, announced this week was that, you know, playing with the concept of will growth continue? And, you know, one of the theories that, that shared the award was the idea that, yes, growth will continue so long as we have ideas and we base our economy on ideas and we build thinking and creation and creativity into our world. Well, look at the idea. All that we are is a result of all that we thought. How we are thinking shapes our reality and our thinking shapes, therefore, our future. And the idea that no, not necessarily living in a software simulation, <laughs> but the idea that the way we think, things are created twice, always. First in our minds, second in the world. All that we are is a result of all that we thought. Well, looking back, all that we are now is a result of all that we have thought up until now. I was working with Rich Litvin over the last four days at the, at an intensive, and he talks about, yeah, most often coaches are simply helping clients focus on different actions to yield different results, as opposed to looking back further and looking at the lenses through which we see our world. Our job as a coach is to help our clients take the lenses off that they're using and look at the world in a different way to mess with their thinking, provide them a different way of looking at things. Well, that's only a piece because then before that, the words that we use, the thoughts that we have shape our lens, shape the lens, change the way we see the world. And that therefore changes the actions that we take thereby yielding different results. The, you know, taking this all the way back, the identity that we have of ourselves, the way we see ourselves, shape our beliefs, which change our thoughts and the way we speak into the world. And that changes our feelings, which changes our actions, which yields different results. So by working with the identity that we hold, the identity that I hold of myself, I change who I am. The actions I take, the results I get, changing how I see myself, changing my thinking changes my world. Yeah, it's been a really killer week. <laughs> um, we are ultimately in control. So what's the opportunity in that? What is the opportunity? Yeah, uh, so Neil, what I love about that, um, if you think you'll succeed or you think you'll fail, you're right. That goes right back to Henry Ford, um, whether you believe you can or believe you can't, you're right. And I think that was episode two. Um, and that is a piece of it. It's not just looking forward in that way. It's everything you have thought about who you are, about the world shapes now, but that doesn't mean 
that that's fixed. In fact, quite the opposite, because if Yeah, it is that simple. If and when I change what I think, and when you change what you think, you change what's created in your head, then you change what's created in the world. You know, seeing myself as somebody who cycles, or who rides a bike, and somebody who um, is just hiring a running coach because I want to start running. And at my age, I don't want to blow my knees, right? So, but seeing, taking those actions is one thing. Changing the way I see myself. I see myself as an athlete. And I haven't seen myself as an athlete for a while. I'm sort of moved into more of a slug state. <laughs> and I'm shifting that identity again. Seeing myself as an athlete changes the way I am in my body, it changes the way I feed my body, it changes the way I rest and recharge and refuel my body, it changes the way I use my body, it changes the way I stand in it, and it changes the way I engage in activity. So I change how I see myself, change my thinking, and it changes my actions, and it changes my results which is different than just going out and doing things. The results are more fleeting when we merely change our actions without changing the foundation, the foundational thoughts behind it. You know, as I stopped seeing myself as an athlete, my God, I think that really changed after a wicked bike accident several years ago. When I stopped seeing myself as an athlete, I changed the way I used my body. I changed my actions because my thinking changed. And so shifting that thinking again allows me to change. So the cool piece here is, as you hear this, as we play with this idea, as you look at this quote, What's coming up for you? What, where are the places where you have an opportunity to change the way you see the world and the language you use to describe the world, to change that lens so that you can change your behavior? Where are those opportunities for you? Neil, I love that, especially with the, the work you do creating some magnificent pens and seeing yourself as a designer helped you a little more open your pen designs, sort of been able to attack things from different angles. Changing the way you see yourself is changing the way you are. I was having this conversation with my daughter, my eldest, who's got a whole bunch of stuff going on in a very tight window in which to do it all. And it's easy to see the overwhelm. And so the question I asked her is, what if it were easy? And that's not Pollyanna, you know, waving a wand, boom, it's easy. No, 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 no. It's quite the opposite. What if it were easy? What would it look like? I mean, Tim Ferriss talks about this a lot. Um, what if it were easy? What would have to happen? What would have to be in place? If you saw a process or a stretch of time or an activity as easy? How would you engage in it differently? What pieces would you delegate? Which things would you reduce the complexity and get to simplicity to allow it to move more easily? How would it change the way you engage? <laughs> Mark, that's a great question. Um, Mark asked me, what are the foundational thoughts that I personally must change in order to run? Um, and do I have limiting thoughts? Um, no, okay, great example, Mark. And thank you for asking because yes, I have excruciatingly limiting thoughts around running. My, my line forever has been, no, I don't run. I only run if I'm being chased and I don't wanna get caught. So, I mean, that's been the mindset. That's been the beliefs that I've held and layer onto that. A lot of the folks that I've ridden with over the last 
13 years <laughs> have come to cycling because they've blown their knees out because they've run badly, run wrong. You know, all the different things they've done that have helped to contribute to blowing out their knees. And cycling is so much more knee friendly. So of course, running's terrible, right? That's the belief set. Um, no, what I also know is um, starting something like that where the body is constantly pounding, everything's about form. If I learn or when I learn how to do it right, I didn't learn most of, much of the techniques of cycling until I'd been riding for three years. Um, <laughs> really had no idea all the, uh, so much of the finesse is the pedal stroke, the angles, getting the geometry on the bike right. Nobody taught me that. I just started pounding on the pedals. It was years before anybody said, you know, if you do it like this. <laughs> um, so with running, if I start off with a proper form, body in the right relationship over the legs, the right, you know, the right gait, the right stroke, uh, you know, striking the ground properly. So I'm not damaging my knees, then I will be able to run. Living right on the corner of Pima Park, I have the opportunity to walk out of my house, lock the door and run. Wickedly efficient, right? And in order to do that, I wanna do it smart. I want it to be easy. <laughs> so the foundational thoughts that I had to change to get there was, no. What's wrong with running is doing it wrong. What's right about running is it's incredibly efficient. It's easy, it's simple, it's fluid when I know how. So I'm hiring Kyle O'Day to teach me how. <laughs> and I'm making it easy. Okay, right now I'm in the place of I'm making it easier. <laughs> so, moving past the complexity of trying to hammer through it myself and going to simplicity, making it simple, changing the way I think to change my actions, to change my results. Literally, or yes, one step at a time, one knee crushing step <laughs> at a time, <laughs> right? Um, Rich, Lidman said something else interesting. We have all done impossible things. I, it, he's got younger kid, four and seven. I and you know, looking at our newborns, when our children were first born, they were little lumps with very little ability to engage in the world. And over a very short time for several of the kids, very, very short time, they learned, they acquired language and the ability to communicate. They overcame a complete disconnection and moving through connection and learning became able to express their thoughts and process thoughts and communicate. And <laughs> When you look at the enormity of that, that seems wickedly impossible and improbable, and yet, absolutely. And so when you look at, we have all been able to do seemingly impossible, or wickedly complex things. We always have the opportunity to do the impossible and we change our thinking to be limitless see myself as limitless the opportunity to do something improbable even if it's as simple as the nursery rhymes that we grew up with i think i can well say no i can it's a cool opportunity so going back to you as simple as it gets right all that we are is a result of all that we thought so what will you change now? How will you take this mindset, this conversation, this idea, and play with it? How will you morph or torque or tweak or shift your thinking, the lens with which you see the world, and allow that to change your actions to get the kind of results that you want? What will you shift now? So I invite you to come to the Facebook group at facebook.com slash 
groups slash mindset Mondays. Join the conversation and share this with your community. Such a cool, rich playground and opportunity to learn and grow. Invite you to come join in the conversation. And until next week, what mindset will you choose?